Good morning. I hope you've enjoyed your student free day yesterday. Um, it's actually student free day still today while well, I'm making this video, but you'll see this tomorrow. So I hope you had a good day yesterday. Um, first day of remote learning, second edition for 2020. Um, and today I have made you a classroom, put it on Seesaw. Um, I'm just going to read through some of the activities you've got today. Um, I want you to do your sur survey first, like we talked about on Monday. The link will be on that classroom whiteboard. Um, I want you to do one page of the spelling worksheet. I want you to log on to Wooshka and find your book and have a read there. Um, there's a writing task. The writing task isn't actually writing. It is going to set you up for writing though for the next little while and that is to make the book that we had a look at in class on Monday. So you'll need, um, need to find some cardboard that you can use for your cover. Um, have a scrounge around your house. The paper that you can use is from the pack that I sent home with you on Monday. Um, plastic pocket full of white pages. Use one page for one page when you fold it up gives you four pages in your book. So use that. Um, you'll also need a bit of string there or an old shoelace or well, something. Something will work. You'll find something around home I'm sure. Uh, for maths, do your numeracy ninja um, first first activity there, so week 11, session 1 you've got. Um, on the PowerPoint, the um, slide that I've made you in the classroom, it's got a link to the answers on the wall. It's also got a link to a timer, uh, a five minute timer there, which is what you normally get for numeracy ninjas. Um, maths activity, I just want you to do some numeracy nin... Did I say numeracy ninjas? I've already said numeracy ninjas. What I really want you to do is some my numeracy. Um, and we'll do that each day. So patterns and algebra is the topic and just go on, try to spend 30 minutes doing your next activity there. So much to tell you. Um, PE. Um, most of you made a choice board the other day. Choose one of your activities from that choice board, but I'm going to put together all of your suggestions for PE activities and I'll put that onto um, a PE choice board, which you'll be able to find on the, in the classroom wall. And also the same for well-being. Whew. Won't be that busy, really. Um, do what you can. And um, what I would really love for you to do is for everyone to make a PowerPoint throughout the day, um, just taking screenshots of their work or um, a photo of their work or just writing down what you've done onto a PowerPoint. And then remember at the end of the day when you've finished your work, can you please submit that PowerPoint as a PDF? Um, if you can't remember how to do that, then let me know and I can send you a little video on how to do that. Um, but you all managed it on Monday, whenever that day was. It seems like ages ago and it was only yesterday for me. Anyway, have a great day. Um, I might read you a little bit of Kintsuke's Kingdom each morning um, and I'll do that now. Get in touch if you need me. Bye. Kintsuke's Kingdom by Michael Morpurgo. Chapter 9 The Night of the Turtles There fell between us a long and aching silence. Kinsuke never once reproached me for what I had done. He was not angry or sullen at me, but I knew I had hurt him to the soul. It wasn't that we didn't speak. We did, but we no longer talked to one another as we had before. We lived, each of us in our separate cocoons, quite civil, always polite, but not together anymore. He had closed in on himself and wrapped himself in his thoughts. The warmth had gone from his eyes. The laughter in the cave house was silenced. He never said so. He did not need to. But I knew that now he would prefer to paint alone. To fish alone. To be alone. So, day after day, I wandered the island with Stella, hoping when I returned that he might have forgiven me, that we could be friends again. But always he kept that distance between us. I grieved for my lost friendship. I remember I went often now to the other end of the island, to Watch Hill, and sat there and sat there, no, look, lo, no longer looking out for ships, but rehearsing about my, rehearsing aloud my explanation. But no, how matter, no matter how much I rehearsed it, how I reasoned it, I could never convince even myself that what I had done was anything other than treachery. In the end, as it turned out, 
It was Kinsuke who explained it to me. We had just gone to bed one night when Tomodachi came to the mouth of the cave and squatted there. She had done this once or twice lately, stayed for just a few minutes, peered in at us and gone off again. Kinsuke spoke up in the darkness. She lose Kikambo again, he said. She always lose her baby. Kikambo very wicked baby. He run off a lot. He make Tomodachi very sad mother. He clapped his hands at her, shooing her away. Kikambo not here, Tomodachi, not here. But Tomodachi stayed, I think for comfort more than anything else. I had noticed before, with the orangutans, how they would often come to Kinsuke when they were upset or frightened, just to be near him. After a while, Tomodachi slunk off into the night and left us alone again, with the din of the forest and the silence between us. I think many thoughts, Kinsuke said suddenly, out of the silence. You are sleeping, Mikasan? He had not called me by my name for weeks, ever since the Coke bottle incident. No, I said. Very good. I got lot to say. You listen, I talk. I think many thoughts. When I think of Tomodachi, I think of your mother. Your mother, she too lose her, sp- her baby. She lose you. That very sad thing for her. Maybe she come looking and she not find you. You not there when she come. She think you dead forever. But she see you in her mind. Now as I speak, maybe she see you in her mind. You always there. I know. I have son too. I have Mikaya. He always in my head. Like Kimi. They dead for sure. But they in my head. They in my head forever. We'll read more tomorrow. Bye. Have a great day.